Amen, amen, amen. You know what? We have been talking about a, to- a certain topic, the topic of Jesus since the beginning of December right up till um, Christmas. And if you missed it, last Sunday, Pastor Rajan, uh, Saturday and Sunday, Pastor Rajan preached two amazing sermons. One about Jesus being our friend. I mean, that's what I got from it, our best friend. And the, on Sunday, he preached about God, Jesus, our provider. You know, if you missed these sermons, I want you to begin, a, I want you to go and a log on to YouTube. The video is there. I want you to listen to this sermon and you will definitely be blessed. And since we're talking about Jesus, as I was preparing yesterday and today, I was just asking God, Lord, this topic is a topic that's so close to my heart, so close to my heart. And there's, if I want to talk about Jesus, I can. there's so many things that I can talk about. There's so many things that I can think about. And I asked the, asked the Lord, Lord, if I were to talk about you, I think 24 hours will not be enough for me to complete talking about you because there's so many things. You are wonderful. You're glorious. You are compassionate. You are kind. You're beautiful. You're holy. You're righteous. There's so many things that we can talk about Jesus. And I asked him, Lord, today what do you want to say to your people? What do you need your people to hear Today, What is it that you need your people to hear today? And clearly I heard the Holy Spirit speak within my heart and there was such a tangible sense of the presence of God because you know Jesus loves when you talk about Him. Jesus loves when you glorify Him. And as, as, as I began to pray, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, ask my people if they really know me. And I want, God said, I want undivided hearts. I want undivided hearts. And today, you know, I'm going to talk about Jesus. It's a topic I love to talk about. But you know, church, there is a difference between people who know about someone and people who know someone, a person. If you know about the person, you know all the things that a person can do. You know their capabilities. You know their strengths and their weaknesses. You know um, how they walk. You know how they look. You know about the person. But if you know the person... You will know the heart of the person. You will know what the person is thinking. You will know what the person means when they say something. You will know because you spend time with the person. Let me give you an example. Okay, an example. Uh, Pastor Rajan. Everybody knows him as Pastor Rajan, right? He's our pastor. He's our mentor. He's our leader. And some of us, he's our friend. He's the person that we can rely on, right? But, and that's how you know Pastor Rajan, right? But for me, I know Pastor Rajan as daddy. I know him as my father. I know the deepest thoughts in his mind sometimes. I know when he says something, what he means behind what he says. I know when he asks us to do something, the, everything behind what he asks, he just has to say one word and I understand a whole lot about what he means. I know that I have a place in his arms. I know that I have a place in his heart that even if I mess up or make mistakes or whatever, the first place that I would run to is my father's arms. And that's how I know Pastor Rajan as my father. And you know, from young, growing up, my mom and dad, both of them have been a representation of Jesus in my life. And I love both my parents dearly, dearly, dearly. And because of that, I grew up falling in love with Jesus after having experience, after experience, after experience with the cross, with the love of Jesus. At the age of 11, I, for the first time, experienced the love of Jesus. And for the end, when I was 15, I experienced the love of the Father. That Jesus can be more than just a savior. Jesus can be more than just a king. But Jesus can be more than just the Lord of Lords and sitting on the throne. That He can be our friend. He can be a father. He can be everything that we ever need. And today I'm telling you, church, I am so in love with Him. I'm so in love with Him because I've experienced Him. So my question to you today is, do you know Jesus or do you know about Him? We're going to talk about two groups of people today. The people that know about Jesus and the people that know Jesus. 
So bear with me. I only have 20 minutes and I hope I do this justice. You know, but if you forget everything that I said today, I pray with all my heart that you would experience Jesus in a way that you've never experienced Him before. And let this carry you from generation to generation to generation. Let's talk about the people who know about Jesus. You see, in the Bible, we read the Bible and we read the Gospels and there's so many beautiful, amazing stories about the Creator, the Master, the Savior. There's so many stories about His compassion and love and kindness. But they are the Pharisees. They are the people who watched Him do miracles, who watched Him perform signs and wonders, who watched Him cast out demons, who walked with Him on certain days. But they didn't know him. They knew about him. So if you would, turn to your Bible this evening together with me. Turn to Luke chapter 13, verse 12 to 14. And we're going to read. It says this. I'll give you some time to turn. Okay, it's on the screen as well. But when Jesus saw her, he called her. This is talking about a woman who was bent over for years, okay? He says, but when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified the Lord. But, everybody say but at home. The rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days. And they, he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. And Jesus went on to school them. You know what? You can go and read continuation of that scripture. But if you look here, it's a powerful passage of scripture. It's a scripture of how Jesus healed a woman who was bent over for years. Imagine the pain that she was going through. Imagine the agony that she faced every single day. And because Jesus saw her and he was moved with compassion and his heart went out with compassion for her. He didn't care where he was, what he was doing. But he said, you shall be healed in Jesus' name. And he commanded the infirmity to go and immediately she was healed. But you see, church, the Pharisees did not understand his heart. They did not understand where he was coming from. They did not understand the compassion behind this miracle. But all they could tell him is, Jesus, who asked you to heal on the Sabbath day? You got six days, right, to heal. You can go and heal tomorrow. You can heal on another day, but don't heal on the Sabbath. You see, what happened was they knew, they knew this man performed a miracle. And instead of focusing on the miracle, on the healer, they began to, they, they began to focus on what the law was saying. And they lost sight of the master. They lost sight of the Savior because they didn't understand the contents of his heart. You see, if you know something about someone, if you know about someone, When they do something, every time they do something, every time an action is taken, there will be a cause for you and I to misunderstand that action. And this is exactly what happened here. They didn't understand the heart of Jesus. They didn't understand His heart. And if we look again, if you return to me, return with me in Mark chapter 10, verse 21 to 22, there's a rich young ruler, and Jesus looking at him, he said, One thing you lack. He said, I've done everything that you asked me to do. And Jesus said, One thing that you lack. Go and sell whatever you have, give it to the poor, and you have a treasure in heaven. Come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word, and he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. You see, church, I'm sure Jesus didn't want him to be poor. I'm sure Jesus didn't want him to live one day um, without food. I'm sure Jesus didn't want him to give away everything because of that. But let me just tell you, this rich young ruler, he didn't understand the heart of the Lord. He didn't understand the heart of Jesus. Because you see, when you give your life to Jesus, when you give everything that you are for Him and to Him, there's nothing that comes to your life but blessings and favor and the kindness of the Lord and there will not be one day in your life that you will lack if you would give Him everything. I know because I've experienced it. We know because we've seen the kindness of the Lord. He will never let you go. He will never let you down. And the only reason someone would say, yes, Jesus, I'll give you all of it 
is if he or she understood the heart of the Father, the heart of Jesus saying, come, give me everything. Give me everything. And they will know, Jesus, I know you. I know you because I know your heart. I know when you say, give me everything, it doesn't mean that you want to see me poor or you want me to see me suffer. But because when, when you say, give me everything, it means when I give you everything, my whole life will be blessed with your favor, with your kindness, with your goodness over my life. So you see, these people, they didn't understand the heart of the Father. They didn't know what Jesus was saying. They didn't understand His heart. And you know, in today's generation, there's so many distractions, church. We have everything that we ever need. And we sometimes fail to have a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm not saying that you don't know Jesus. I know that you know Him. I know that you see Him doing miracles. I know that you, you see Him performing signs and wonders. But do you know Him? Do you know His heart? Is He everything to you? Does Jesus revolve around every part of your life and your being? Because when He does, when He is, He changes everything. Nothing else stays the same when Jesus becomes number one. When you know the Lord, when you know His heart, it changes the way you live. It changes the way you walk. There'll be confidence. There'll be confidence in your speech. It will change the way you live your life. It will change the way you uh, relate to the people in your world. Why? Because Jesus is everything. Jesus is everything. So I want to challenge you today. I want to encourage you today. Let's not, let's not know about Jesus. Let's not know about Him because there are enough people in this world that know about Jesus. You know, we go out for Sikilo Kase and we ask them, hey, you know Jesus? Yeah, 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 you know Jesus. I know, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. And they know Jesus. They know that He's God. They know that He performs miracles. They know that He can do signs and wonders. But at the end of the conversation, they will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Jesus. I know Muruga. I know all the other gods. All are same. Why? Why? Because they've not had an experience with Jesus. They don't understand the heart of the Father. They have not experienced and encountered the love of the Father. And I pray with all my heart, if you're watching this today, that you will have an encounter with Jesus. If you've had an encounter with Jesus and you've forgotten what it's all about, I pray that the fire of God will reignite that passion for Jesus once again. Because Jesus deserves to be everything in our life. He deserves to be adored and glorified and exalted and loved. You know, I can spend hours just sitting and saying, Jesus, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I adore you. Not because of what you can give me. Not because of what you can do. But because I love you and I understand your heart. And I know you want to tell me what's on your heart. So here I am. I want to listen. There are a few people in the Bible, a lot of people in the Bible that were like that. And the first one that I want to highlight is in Luke chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. It's the story about the sinful woman. And I'm giving you all the scripture so you can write it down and go back after this sermon. And I want you to read it, I mean, in your home. Read it and go through it and see what God is saying to you about it. And he says, and behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster a flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of the head and of her head and she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil you see you see church this is so beautiful i think this is one of the most favorite scriptures or stories in the bible for me personally because you see what happened before she walked into that house she knew about jesus she heard about jesus this son of god he heals people the sick have been healed there's this woman she heard a friend saying a woman who had an uh, issue of blood for 12 years has been completely healed. Has been completely healed. People are delivered and set free. And she heard about Jesus when she walked into that house. And she knelt down before him. 
And she began to behold the Lord, the Savior of the universe. I know that the eyes of compassion of the Master would have been looking down at her. And as she began to weep and her tears began to clean it and wash the feet of Jesus. I tell you what happened, church. There was a divine exchange. There was a divine exchange. Her sinful nature, they called her the sinful woman. But as she knelt down before the Master, He took all her sinful nature and exchanged change it with the righteousness and the holiness of the Lord. And after she behold, she beheld the master, her life changed completely. She fell in love with him. The Bible says she couldn't stop kissing his feet. You see, church, Today you may be in a position where you just know about Jesus. But can I just tell you, church, today that you can know more more than just about Him. You can know Him. He is willing. His heart is open for you to know Him. And as you begin to approach Him and behold Him, Every part of you will change. And she walked out there in holiness and in righteousness. I believe that. And I believe that even though her eyes were on the master, she didn't care about what people were saying around her, but she focused on the master. And her life was completely changed. And then we see the blind man, Matthias, in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 and 47. Now they came to Jericho. And as he he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude followed them and blind a blind man the blind man Bartimaeus son of Timaeus sat by the road begging and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to cry out and say Jesus son of David have mercy on me look at this he didn't know Jesus he heard about him he knew this man could heal him he knew that this man performed miracles and signs and wonders but as he called out Jesus son of David I have mercy on me Jesus didn't ignore him why because our Jesus is a compassionate God he's a compassionate father he loves he embraces he goes to the lowest parts of our life and picks us up from there and takes us into a place of glory with him and he looked at the blind man and he asked him what do you one from me. And he said, sir, I want to see again. And immediately Jesus touched his eyes and he got completely healed. His eyes were open as he began to behold the Lord. As he began to behold Jesus, his life was completely changed because Jesus said this to him. You know what? You're healed. Your faith has made you well. Now go and and tell of of this miracle. He said, no, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. The scripture says that he followed Jesus after that. As he beheld, he, his eyes were open and he saw the Lamb of God for the first time. The first man that he saw after, after being, his eyes being opened was the Son of God. And as he beheld his eyes and his love. His life was completely changed. You see, church, can I just tell you that if you behold the eyes of the Master, if you behold the eyes of Jesus, you cannot keep quiet about it. You cannot keep quiet about His love, about His compassion, about His heart. You cannot. You will want to talk to, about it with someone. Someone once said this, if you find a group of friends or someone, a friend, who constantly talks about the love of the Lord, who constantly talks about the kindness and the compassion of God, keep them close to you because these are the ones that you want to keep close to you. People that would not stop talking about Jesus. People that would be aware of their surroundings. And you and me, church, if we behold the Master, if we behold the Lord, you know what? We will not stop talking about Jesus. Everywhere we go, we will say, Jesus loves you and we'll mean it with all our heart. You see, we can we can go out and we can say, hey, you know, the other day, right, I saw uh, this person, this pastor said this, this pastor said that, uh, that person got healed. I saw because of this in, in in America, in um, Israel, in wherever you saw a person get healed. But what? imagine if you go up to a person and say, hey, Jesus loves you. You know what? Today, you are going to be healed. And if you pray for them, they get immediately healed. And that's even more of a testimony than if you share someone else's testimony. Don't know about Him. Know Him personally. What do you have to say about Jesus if someone comes to you and says, hey... What do you have to say about Jesus? 
Oh, can you just tell them how much He loves you? Can you tell them how He changed your life? Will you be able to tell them how you, you lack nothing because of His provision and kindness in your life? Don't know about Him. Get to know Him. Can I share a testimony with you? Real quickly, you know, we've been going out for Sekilo Kasi and we've been sharing the love of Jesus everywhere we go and it's been such a breath of fresh air. It's been a powerful time, amazing. Some of you have come together with us and it's been great. You, you are, it's just amazing. And the first day we went for Sekilo Kasi, we went house to house and a lot of them are either Indian or our, our cousins, okay? That, that race and religion, okay? They're our cousins and um, as we began to knock house to house and door to door, we just felt the love of Jesus come upon us because we saw people's condition and we know that they're really, really in need and they need more than just the groceries. They need the love of Jesus. And as we began to go house to house, there was this lady that we knocked on her house and apparently it was the wrong address. It was the wrong address, the wrong house. And in the, in the beginning when I looked at her, I was with Pastor Sebastian and Pastor Derek and I think Athens was there as well. And I said, as we began to talk to her, um, she was a little bit stern in the beginning. She said, she said um, you know, I, uh, she said, what, what, what name? Oh, I'm sorry, that's not my name. Uh, uh, this is not my things. Can you please take it and give it to that person? It's that person's things. So we said, we thought she was a little bit stern, but Pastor Sebastian said, okay, let's just give it to her anyway because, you know, it's the love of Jesus. And so she, we were about to give her the bag and she said, um, can you please put it there? She said, can you please put it there? And she said, uh, put it there. So we, we, she said, I can't because uh, I'm feeling very painful. I just went for operation and I have cancer. And um, we put the bag there and we told her, she said, Jesus loves you. And can we just pray for you in the name of Jesus? And in the weeks before that, the Lord have be, has been teaching me to just behold His beauty, to behold His face and to just love Him. And I told God, I said, but we need to pray for the sick. We need to do this. And God said, no, you, you behold me. And when you behold me and love me, everything else will just come. Healing, deliverance, miracles, what do you need? It's going to come. But you behold me. So in that moment, uh, Pastor Sebast asked Pastor Derek to pray for her. And I just closed my eyes. And immediately when I closed my eyes, I just started beholding the love of Jesus. I, I adore you. I, I behold you. And I, I saw the face of Jesus in front of me. And I just said, Jesus, I adore you and I behold you. And immediately in my spirit, as my eyes were closed, I saw Jesus standing at the back of her. And putting his arms around her. And I opened my eyes <laughs> immediately and we just continued praying. I was like, wow, Jesus, thank you for your love, for your presence. And we prayed in Jesus' name, amen. And when we, after we started praying, immediately there was a change on her face. And she started, she started crying. She, started, she said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I feel so touched. I, I don't understand, but I feel so touched. And I feel she felt the love of the Lord. She, do, couldn't, she couldn't understand it, but we knew. And when she started crying, I knew it was the love of Jesus. And in that moment, God taught me that when you go out, when you, when you pray for people, you just behold me and I will do it. I will do it. Because if you know the love of the Father and you adore Him and you behold Him, everything else just begins to fall into the right place at the right time. And she said, thank you so much. And Pastor Sebastian said, that's the love of Jesus that you're feeling. And you know, we told her, we're going to follow up on you. We'll continue to pray for you. And we believe that, that God touched her in that moment. And guess what? That's, this is the best part of um, the story is that she was, she was holding a religious book while we were praying for her. She was holding it like that and we were praying for her and talking. You know, we didn't realize until we finished praying that we saw, oh, maybe she's, she's, pretty, she's pretty staunch, you know. But Jesus can touch anyone at any time, at anyone. And I think I have time for one more story. We went to the, uh, the Rohingya place on, um, on th Tuesday. Thursday. Tuesday? Tuesday. This Tuesday. And Pastor Sebastian was there, Brother Ray Sam Raymond, you were there with us, and I was there. They, they, this family invited us into their house, and we, uh, Pastor Sebastian asked the guy, said, do you have any pain in your body? And he said, I have a backache. 
I have a back problem. And he said, can we pray for you? Like we pray in the name of Jesus. And he said, yes, for sure. Like um, come pray for me. And again, in that moment, I did the same thing. I said, Jesus, I just behold your beauty. And because I adore you, you're going to heal this man because you are a, a God of compassion. More than I want him to be healed, Lord, you want him to be healed. And we, and we closed my eyes and Brother Sam went and he prayed for this man, laid hands on him. And the first time, he said, hey, the pain is less. The pain is less. So we prayed again. And as, as, as we began to pray, again, I saw the hand of Jesus just touch him over here. I, I'm not exaggerating in my spirit. I saw the hand of Jesus touching him. And when we said, in Jesus' name, amen. And we asked him, uh, can you please test it out? And before that, he couldn't bend all the way to, to the bottom. And immediately, he bent all the way to the bottom. And he came up and he said, huh? That is a kid. Then Sebastian, Sister Sebastian said, Jangan tipu, ah. betul lah, tak ada sakit. <laughs> he said, betul, betul. And he bent, he kept bending down. And he was completely healed. Come on, yes, give Jesus all the glory for that. You see, church, when we begin to behold the face of the Father, of the Master, what happens is that He takes care of everything. What do you need? Do you need healing? Do you need a miracle? Do you need financial provision? Jesus is the answer. And I've learned for all my life to just fall deeply in love with Him until everything else doesn't matter. And when I fall in love with Jesus, I tell Him, Lord, anything that is not of you in my life, I give you permission to remove it because I want to be in love with you. I want to smell the fragrance of my Master when I wake up early in the morning. I want to be like my dad as I watch him and my mom as I wake up in the morning and I watch them. And they enjoy their communion with the Father. I used to ask God, God, how on earth does my dad wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning? Because I mean, all of us want to follow that example. But you know, it's hard to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning. And I realized that when he wakes up in the morning, he just communes with the Father. He loves. He loves Jesus. And because of his love for Jesus, everything else falls into place. Calvary City Church is here because of the communion we have with Jesus. PKK was birthed because of the communion with Jesus. Miracles, signs and wonders, provision for this building, provision for every single ministry because of his communion with the Master. Last example and then I'm done. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. And I want to talk to you about the story of Saul who became Paul. You see, Saul, he hated the sight of Jesus. He hated the thought or, the, or anything that he heard about Jesus. He hated the Christians. He um, persecuted them and killed them. But as he was going on the road to Damascus, Jesus met him in that very moment. See, he knew about Jesus. He knew about the idea of Jesus. He understood that Jesus can heal. He was angry that people believed in Jesus. But in that moment, when a light shone from heaven and began to and touch him and said, Jesus, I'm Jesus, the person that you are persecuting. In that moment, Saul looked up and he said, God, how, what, what do I do? What do I do? And in that moment, his entire life changed. A person who hated Jesus, a person who persecuted Christians, wrote this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 and 10. He said, But what things are gain of what gain to me? These things I've counted as loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I count all these things loss for the excellence of the knowledge, the knowing of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I've suffered loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having the righteousness which is from the law, but having the righteousness and faith which is from God, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering being conformed to His death. Look at that. What a transformation. That kind of transformation can only happen if you will behold the face of the Master. See, you and me, we know Jesus very well. 
We come to church every Sunday. We watch online church. We're surrounded by Christian friends and family. We have meetings with pastors and leaders. We go to cell groups and we are so connected. We know, we know about Him. I want to challenge you today. Would you take the next step to know Him? That one day, it will not just be me saying I've experienced and I've seen God do signs and wonders and miracles. I've seen the hand of the Lord upon people. But we will hear people from all of our congregation saying I've seen miracles. I've seen Jesus touch people. I've seen people encounter the love of the Father. I myself encountered the love of the Father. You see why it's so important? Because now my Father passed that on to my generation and I'm in love with Jesus. Jesus, you have no idea. But now it's time for us, our generation, and the generation a bit before me, to pass it on to the next generation. How are we? How are we? Um, how are we uh, showing Jesus to people? You know why? Can I just tell you something? You are the only Jesus that some people are ever gonna come across. So how do you carry Him? How do you carry His compassion? How do you carry His love? Do we carry the Jesus that we behold? Or do we carry the Jesus that we read about and just know about? I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you. Let our children, let the next generation be so in love with Jesus that could, they could not even ignore the sound of His voice. That the moment Jesus speaks to them, hey, the Lord is speaking to me. We can do this. Let's go. Let's win the loss for Jesus. Because can I tell you, until you experience the love of Jesus for yourself, until you experience beholding the Master and loving Him, the world, you will never step out of your comfort zone to even tell somebody about the love of Jesus. Never. Because you can only talk about someone that you're so in love with. You can only continuously talk about somebody that you love and you adore and you, and you know about, you understand their heart and you know what they're doing. You can talk hours about them if you're in love. I just feel that God is calling Calvary City Church back to a place where we would behold Jesus. But pastor, I can't spend hours spending time with Jesus. You just decide what you want to do. Decide how long you want to spend in His presence. He will teach you how to love Him. He will teach you how to adore Him. He will teach you how to behold Him. You know, spending time with Jesus is not boring because when you spend time with Him, He comes. He comes. The moment you speak about the person of Jesus, He comes. And He's, what do you need that day? You need comfort. He's your comforter. What do you need? You need healing. He's your healer. What do you need? Let's look at the healer and not the healing. Let's look at the deliverer and not the deliverance. Behold, 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 behold Him. Behold Jesus. So that our children and our children's children will experience His love and His presence. I want to challenge you today, church. Behold the beauty of the Lord. Behold the beauty of Jesus. If you have never experienced His presence before, ask Him, God. He says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Ask and then seek. You know, we stop at asking. God, I want to see your presence. I want to see your glory. Mm, five minutes. Mm, boring. I can hear the, um, the fly. I can hear my wife snoring. Mm, okay, I think no lah. God bless my day in Jesus' name, amen. And we leave. We stop at asking. But it says, seek and knock. Knock, knock until he answers God. I am here. I'm not leaving until I have a glimpse of your glory. I'm not leaving until I encounter you. Because once you have a glimpse of his presence, yes, church, it's not about how you feel. It's not about the feeling. It's not. It's not about that. But you need to have an encounter with the glory of God, with the presence of God. Because until and unless you have an encounter with his glory... You will not want to talk about Jesus anywhere you go. Your life will just be mundane, every day doing the same thing over and over again. You know, I have five more minutes before we end. If you forgot everything that I said, I'm going to ask Athens to come. 
Have you forgot about everything I said? Can you just remember this one thing? Crystal asked us to behold the face of Jesus this week. And as you begin to behold the face of the Master, let me tell you, whatever you need, God's going to bring it. God's going to bring it to completion. He's going to bring it to completion.